Welcome to Chinwag with the Horseman. I'm Andrew. I'm Mayberry. I'm James. And I'm Casey. We're so glad that you've joined us here wherever you get your podcast. We're available uh, wherever you can find uh, quality podcasts. Wanted to uh, mention also to you, we've got an email address set up to hear from the fans. James, tell them about that email address. Uh, the email address is chinwagwithhorseman at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you guys. That's right. And we're also on uh, YouTube where these episodes are uploaded to YouTube. Casey, give them that information. Why, sure. Our YouTube channel is Chinwag with the Horseman. And after they're released on the uh, podcasting apps, we uh, move them over to YouTube. And we've got plans for our YouTube channel to have some more exciting videos up at, at some point in the future. Uh, so keep an eye out on our YouTube channel. Uh, the nudity will be quite tasteful. Um, of course. We're known for our tasteful nudes. I uh, want to take a minute to shout out to James because we have longtime listeners will know that we've been kind of learning to podcast as we podcast. And so when we started, we didn't have a clue about what we were doing, really. And James has added another piece to the puzzle with us. And, and him and his wife have put together a great uh, opening theme song for us. Tell us about it, James. Uh, so yeah, me and uh, me and the wife were just um, messing around with uh, with Garage Band and found uh, sound loops and everything, and, and we put together uh, the intro you guys heard at the at the very beginning. Hope you enjoyed it, um, and you never know we might change it up down the down the line and and switch up uh, the intro music. But like Andrew said, we're we're learning how to podcast as podcasting. Um, so there you go. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hey, Mary, you, you texted us all by the time, I mean, at the time of recording, it was last week, but you texted us all about an email that we received in the, uh, in our official Chimlag with the Horseman email address. You want to tell us about that email? Are we talking about the one from the guy who builds the websites? Yeah, this totally legit dude. I I just saw it one night and I just thought, wow, he's saying first email we ever gotten. It might have been spam. It might have been something crazy. I don't know. Who knows? This guy was definitely trying to steal our identities. Like, hey, guys, just send me your social security numbers, uh, your addresses, uh, <laughs> mother's maiden names, all that stuff, and I'll get you guys set up with a website. It was definitely like a VPN needed email. Like, hey, don't uh, don't give out your personal information to some guy saying, "I'll build you uh, a, a website." <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that website would have been dope, but we did not take him up on that. Uh, just yeah. for the listeners, if you hear clicking and jingling in the background, my dog is is with me here this evening. My wife's on vacation. And so the dog is uh, in the room. She's normally with, with my wife, but today she's in the room. So I apologize for that. Now, we did get a, a different email. Um, James, you want to tell us about that? Yeah, we, uh, we got an actual email from a listener. Um, it's actually a guy I work with. Uh, we'll call him Boo Bear. Um, it's just a, an affectionate name we call him at work. Um, but Boo Bear actually uh, wrote in with a, with a question, actually a couple of questions that he wanted to hear us talk about. Um, and we all decided this week um, with the release of, uh, of Space Jam that we would, we would go ahead and tackle a big debate because we're all uh, big sports fans here. Um, but the question is, who's better, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Oh, man. That's a hard question. We're all older, I would say, of the generation of the, I don't know. Of course, I like Michael Jordan, but I'm old and like <laughs> nobody was better than Matt him. Jordan and was, you know, crying on his knee. So and you, sat, you sat in Michael Jordan's lap. So I feel like you have to pick Michael Jordan. And I was like 20 years old at the time. So it was a little weird. He was not comfortable with that. No, but uh yeah, I actually did meet Jordan. We've talked about this, I think, on here before, haven't we? But I was like 
three probably and, and met him at a wedding and uh yeah we're we're pretty tight me and jordan we kind of text each other and stuff every now and then try to keep up i'll go play golf with him every now and then but jordan's definitely better than Le- lebron james but lebron man he's still he's still playing he's like older than us and we're pretty dang old so i don't, I don't really have an opinion at all on this i am <laughs> i'm not a huge basketball fan so i'm going to default to say jordan I can't defend that, but I'm just that's my default because he's from North Carolina. He's from God's country, so that's my default there. Yeah, we're probably. I mean, I'm like a superficial basketball fan. Like I like it, but I don't really keep up with it that well. But you know, from from what I know about basketball, Michael Jordan all the way. I mean, when Jordan went into the Hall of Fame, he called out people who were like still in their prime that he could beat them one on one, and nothing against. LeBron, but for him to win a championship, he had to go and form the first, you know, super team with um, with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. So is that Cleveland or something? Uh, it was in Miami. Oh, okay. Um, that is that is where they ended up going. Um, Jordan, yeah, granted, you could you can argue that Pippen and and Rodman were all you know superstars of their own, but. They didn't like call each other up in free agency. Say, "Hey, don't you come and play with me?" And you know, we'll win a championship. They they kind of did, eh. because they because Michael told the Chicago Bulls when uh, Robin uh, left out of Detroit to say, "Hey, get him, bring him to us, and we will win a couple more championships." Yeah, but at that point, Jordan had what three already. I'm just, I'm just saying. I and mean, couldn't Scotty Pippen could have made a lot more money somewhere else too, couldn't he? Wasn't that a big yeah. thing? Like he could have. Well, he more well, the that's the what team. ended up breaking them up. Was Scotty was like, guys, I should be paid more. Where's the money? And um, but I did look up an interesting fact that uh, during all the meetings between. And and this is gonna bring in another name that might should be in this conversation. Um but uh, but Kobe Bryant and, and he's actually leading the well, he led the stats of beating Michael like I think four two two. And then LeBron is is beating has beaten uh, Kobe like sixteen to six. Are these like a Computer head things head or, or something. Game or, matches. Yeah, game matches. Which I'm not saying that, you know. But see, Kobe was also not in his prime. So Kobe and and Jordan overlapped some, right? Like they, they're yeah, playing they, years. they overlapped. And um, then, of course, Kobe and LeBron overlapped. Mm-hmm. Um, because the thing is that they always said that Michael passed the torch to Kobe. To carry on the basketball stuff, and then Kobe passed it along to, I guess LeBron. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Mm. I mean, so because LeBron, same, you know, just a couple years younger than Kobe. So all right, we're gonna take a vote here, Casey. Who do you got? Jordan. Andrew. Jordan. Avery. I don't know. It would have been nice to see them both in their prime play against each other. Just right now, final seconds of a game, who, who's taking the shot? Uh, probably Michael, since Michael's a traditional shooting god. All right. So there you go. All four horsemen, Jordan all the way. So, like I said, speaking of uh, what brought up the debate question, the reason why we picked it, Space Jam movie came out. Um, so who's, who's gonna, who wants to start the review of the Space Jam movie? Man, I thought it was great. You know, I watched it the other day. It was awesome. You know, seeing Bugs Bunny and, you know, these, all these basketball store stars playing. Uh, I don't know. what do you think? I mean, I liked it. I mean, I thought it was fantastic when, uh, the way the Monstars tricked, um, you know, 
Charles Barkley and Muggsy Bodes and the and the giving up their uh, their powers and everything and and you know they thought they had it in the bag but you know Bugs and them went and got Jordan who had retired and was playing uh, playing baseball in Alabama. I like I like the scene with uh, Larry Bird and uh, Bill Murray too. That was pretty sweet. That yeah. was one of my favorites. <laughs> that was a great one. Um, uh, we learned that Larry Bird is not white, but he is in fact clear. Clear. Uh, according to Bill Murray, and gosh, how do you argue with Bill Murray? Man, I should have I should have looked this up before with this review. But do you guys know the the name of the guy who was like the PR person for uh, Jordan? He was like digging up the hole trying to find him. Wayne he was on like Knight. Wayne that? Knight. Mm-hmm. That dude was on like every movie in the nineties. I'm pretty sure, like Jurassic Park. Wasn't he on that movie? And then wasn't uh, that Jurassic Newton Park. from Seinfeld? That's right. He was on Seinfeld. Yes. He was in uh, JFK. I'm like, man, this guy's he a lot of on Seinfeld. <laughs> Fun fact, he's also named Newman in JFK. Really? <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Seinfeld did a did like a reenactment of the JFK thing. They did the back into the left Zapruder film on Seinfeld. When uh, Kramer and Newman get spit on by, who was it? One of the Yankees, I think. <laughs> um, one of, I don't know, one of them spat at Kramer and his head went back into the left and they... They re- redid JFK with that. the whole recreation. So yeah. we can say this uh, this movie from 1994, whenever it came out, it was pretty sweet. Oh yeah, it hands down the best mashup of uh, of live action and cartoons that you could ever think of, outside of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And frankly, the only reason Who Framed Roger Rabbit takes it for me is because you have Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse interacting on screen, which yeah. is. You would never get that now. That's unbelievable. That would never happen today. Uh-uh. Two completely different companies. Hmm. So um, nobody watched the new one, though, right? The new Space Jam, nobody watched that, right? No. That's, I thought that's about a, it, but hard I was like, eh. Yeah. I mean, why, you can't mess with perfection. You can't. You, you can't. Know? I heard it was not well-received, though, from, I don't know. I've heard that. I've heard that it was basically a commercial for HBO Max. <laughs> a lot of cameos from from characters and stuff. And I saw where they they kicked out Pepe Le Pew. Like Pepe Le Pew is not in it, but they included the rapists from uh, Clockwork Orange. Holy crap! Uh, yeah. yeah. So okay. you know, it's good that they're being consistent. I guess. Yeah, that's a. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, let's kick out the. Uh, the skunk, the French skunk, and uh, actually have people who ruined a childhood song of uh, singing in the rain. So, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen A Clockwork Orange, uh, and I, I don't need that scene explained to me or or described. Um, it's uh, disturbing. But, you know, maybe they kicked maybe they kicked Pepe Le Pew out strictly because he was French. Maybe they don't like the French. Maybe. maybe. Who knows? I don't work for HBO Max, so. That's not, that's not very nice of them. Yeah. It's not. You got to be all inclusive. Uh-huh. It seems kind of mean to me, to the French. Yeah. yeah. Um, Casey, I don't know if you have anything in mind, but uh, you had mentioned maybe you would want to tell a story from work. Sure. Um, and you can, I'll let you take over so you can decide how much you want to reveal and, <laughs> and that sounds, what have you. That sounds good. I'm just going to preface this. I'm, I'm not a very good storyteller, as me and Andrew have discussed. <laughs> <laughs> discussed before on here uh but so if i you know can improve the story let me know but it's not um, that you're a bad storyteller it's that the stories don't last very long there's no build up there's no drama it's just yeah the other day uh went to ingles nah. street, i guess the ingles so, is a uh, local grocery store for those so, that don't know oh that's true i guess so keep that in mind uh you know build it up as, as best you can I got, I got, I got, I got to work on this. Sorry, I got to get in the right mindset to tell this story. And I got, I got, I'm trying to think of one. So, thought we could. Uh, let's see. So I'll just tell you guys, I am a nurse. Um, I have been for several years now, and I've had several different jobs. And I'm sure, you know, anybody in their working life's got all kinds of crazy stories, and, and nurses do to <laughs> pretty much any nurse I'm sure has got a crazy story but um, I've worked on uh, medical helicopters for several years too 
So I was trying to think of a good story to tell. And so I guess a couple of years ago, um, you know, we were on the medevac uh, side of it. We work 24 hour shifts, at least in my experience. And so uh, you kind of just sit around waiting on a call. Um, you know, you could do nothing all day. You could be going all day long. Um, Don't you, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but oh, you're fine. didn't you play a good bit of Mass Effect on one such call? <laughs> uh, one day I did play Mass Effect recently. The new, um, somebody, one of my coworkers brought a PlayStation 5 and uh, I played the new Mass Effect trilogy, the original. I guess they had like a remaster of it. And I totally played some Mass Effect at work. But it's fine, you know, they uh, they expect you to, you know, once you get all your duties done, you can do kind of whatever you want until it's time to go. It's pretty sweet to get paid to take a nap. But, uh, yeah, this a few years ago. I was I was working, and it was late at night, you know. we uh, I, think, I think I was in bed. We got a call, you know, it comes over the, over the speaker at the base, and they tell you, um, they don't tell you anything like personal information of the patient until you accept the flight. That way you're not, you don't feel pressured to go. Like they don't say, Oh, we got a kid that's going to die if you don't get here right now. They don't tell you stuff like that. So you're not like, Oh, we have to go. They just tell you the weight hey, and where it's at. Yeah. You don't have to go. No, no, we, uh, we don't go on every flight. It's, it all depends on the weather basically. Like that's the main thing. Like, so, the first step is, you know, somebody calls dispatch. It could be 911, you know, EMS or a hospital calls and they give them information. And then our dispatch service sends it to us. Uh, they may not always know the weight, especially if it's a sync flight um, or 911 type call. But uh, they'll tell us uh, like a distance and heading or something. And then they'll tell us, uh, it, they'll give us that information. We'll Our pilot will see if they can take the flight. So they'll look at the weather. Uh, make sure it's going to be safe. Uh, that's the main thing you want to, we're going to make sure it's going to be safe. Um, so we don't always go, not every flight that gets called. So if you called in the middle of a rain, like a thunderstorm, nobody's going to fly. <laughs> but the pilot makes that decision. <laughs> yes. And actually, I mean, they, they do, but actually every crew member has a, um, we, uh, like veto power, you know, they call it three to go one to say no. Um, cause there's a pilot, a medic and a nurse, on the helicopter usually that's how most of them work how many calls so, have you refused based on the fact that you were playing mass effect <laughs> at least six <laughs> no we i mean generally we only turn down calls for weather um so there's yeah not usually any other i mean but you can i mean if there's some kind of if you just have a bad feeling about it or whatever i mean they tell you you, you can always turn it down um and we we've turned it down i mean plenty of times we had got up and then thought the weather was okay and then you leave and you know you see thunder or, or lightning or um, i guess you can't see thunder but <laughs> you see lightning or rain or the visibility is low we turn around and come back but uh, so yeah they gave us this call you know they'll say like you know heading 130 for 20 nautical so you'll get in the helicopter go that direction and then when you're flying they'll tell you about the what's going on um uh, so this one, it sounded like some kind of crazy, I don't know, cops type story or something. <laughs> Apparently these, these people were doing meth or something, decided it would be a great idea to get in their car. And uh, then they were um, chased by the police and they went through like three different states. They just kept going. And eventually they went through a farmer's field, like a hay field, uh, drove to the end of the field, crashed into a tree, got out of their car, just a man and a woman. And, you know, I, was, I tell all this information. I mean, I can, I'll tell this story not to reveal any personal information. So it's not uh, tied to any certain person. But um, so they crashed their car, got out, um, thought they would run on foot, got out, ran into the woods. And they didn't know that, like, just a few feet in the woods is like a 50 foot cliff. So these people both ran off a cliff. <laughs> so they ran off a cliff and it was not good. Um, 
So we ended up landing and, you know, most helicopters now usually transport one patient at a time. So they called um, two two helicopters in. So we landed and it was, uh, we, we ended up getting in the back of a truck, driving down to the where the patients were, loading them up, uh, you know, bringing them in the helicopter. Of course, they're all banged up. Uh, we loaded her in the back of the truck before we got up there, and it was like one of those like slick bed liners, so they were sliding all over the place. <laughs> we're trying to hold them still, but um, yeah, uh, we loaded them in the helicopter. Thankfully, they 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 were fine. They were uh, awake and confused, but uh, they're they were stable. Uh, they made it just fine to the uh, hospital, as far as I know, they made it. But. Um, yeah, I thought, man, that's a that's a crazy story. Somebody decides that they're going to run from the police and then um, run off a cliff. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> it never ends well to run from the police. It, it does not. It does not. I mean, I thought, uh, I don't know if I've told you guys that story before, but I thought, man, that might be an interesting story to tell these guys about these people, these meth addicts running off a cliff, you know. I've never heard it, but it's a major downer. <laughs> man i should have picked a more cheery story i guess there's not a lot of cheery stories though and <laughs> when you're man, picking I people guess not. well i'm gonna tell one now that hopefully will be kind of cheery uh so as we've said in the past too casey and i used to work at a pharmacy this is something that did not happen to our pharmacy but it happened to one um fairly close to ours but it was not ours so it's nobody nobody that we know that i know of i'm not even sure who it was um but a pharmacist buddy of ours told us this, that he was working one day and a lady came in and she said, I've got a stool sample in this Pringles can. Will you, um, will you look at it? <laughs> <laughs> and the big moron <laughs> said, sure, he'd look at it. So the, I think he thought maybe she wasn't serious. <laughs> but the woman had collected a stool sample in a Pringles can and brought it to him to look at. Now, number one, your pharmacist is not going to be able to do much uh, <laughs> about your stool sample. Like, can you imagine walking through the parking lot and somebody's like, hey, check out this Pringles can. I got something to show you. <laughs> what do you think of this? I mean, the yeah. person just walks through the store with a Pringles can with – with you know fecal so matter simple, yeah you know, like imagine walking out and somebody being like have you paid for that and they're like nah <laughs> just leave it i just like you Put it back on the shelf <laughs> they're not air they're not airtight containers so the smell would be radiating out of them yes i'm not yeah. sure why he didn't i don't know he did not take this person seriously though that's i think that's why he called the bluff so to speak but whoo there was no bluff Oh, well, oh, man. man. I mean, you're just I'm also going to say, I mean, if it was runny, <laughs> it's still a cardboard container. Man. So, I mean, like, Pringles uh, cans have um, aluminum lining on them. Like, that's, that's what helps wick away some of the grease from the chips. That's that's so true, stay, but I mean, so it's, not, it's not the thickest thing in the wall. I would I wouldn't I'm trust a Pringles can full of pretty sure the wet size food. have it like it's cardboard. Yeah, it's I cardboard. Happen, I happen to have a Pringles can here. Um for unrelated purposes. I had my lunch today, I had some Pringles. So are Pringles cans smaller or are my hands fatter? Your hands are fatter. Yeah. That's no. what it is. So mm -hmm. I can confirm James is correct. There is kind of an aluminum I don't know, foil kind of lining in there. So in your opinion, would it be hard to take a dump in uh, in a can like that, like the aiming abilities and everything? Hmm, that's an interesting – my thought was always that she somehow, after depositing it into her commode, somehow fished, fished it, it out and put it in the uh, put it in the Pringles can. Is this a hand you know, scoop fish maneuver? fish net that you a, get with, uh, with like aquarium fish? You know, yeah. remember being a little kid and that's all you wanted was an aquarium and a fish and you'd go and you'd get the fish. And then the person that was like selling the fish to you would look Excuse at your me. parents and be like, yeah, you're going to need this net thing. 
<laughs> and then sure enough, in like an hour and a half after you got home, the fish is dead. They're just fishing it out and putting it in the toilet. I wonder if she used one of those. A burial at sea there. Yeah. She may have just like scooped it with the can. I don't know. I don't. Maybe. But then that would have compromised it with the water. That's true. We See, should maybe like have uh, that pharmacist on as a guest, and he can give us some additional information. I like to imagine her her aim was just so good that she didn't even need to scoop it out. Was well, she squatting over the can? <laughs> <laughs> She's right out in the parking lot right there. You never know. <laughs> wow. So uh, before we go to break, I want to ask about the Olympics. Is anybody watching the Olympics or anything? Hey, Barry, I know you've been watching some of it, haven't you? Uh, just a couple of the odd sports. I, I like the odd ones that doesn't get me much of the TV time. Like Quidditch? Uh, no, like uh, beach volleyball, uh, oh, indoor no volleyball, volleyball. <laughs> um, stuff like that. Like um, catch some of the indoor cycling or uh, triathlons and stuff like that. I'm having a hard time finding coverage because I wanted to watch. You know, I've gotten into boxing in the last, well, since the pandemic last year, I guess. <laughs> I've gotten into boxing, so I wanted to watch boxing, and I just have a hard time finding it on on the coverage. I found it a little bit today. I got to watch, like, the last two rounds of a um, semifinal where Cuba defeated Azerbaijan, which I think Cuba Cuba dominates in boxing, I think, pretty well in the Olympics. Are these the same ones that play like – that uh, fight in professional boxing, or is it different people? So, not typically, but there is one guy who I think he's only had two professional fights on the U.S. team. Um, typically, if you're a pro athlete, they really don't want you doing the Olympics. But uh, basketball does pro, I think, and soccer. Soccer. There's some, but typically baseball I mean, sometimes. I would rather I would rather see the odd sports like watching curling when the uh, when Olympics is on and stuff like that. Than the big major sports like gymnastics or swimming or track and field. Funny thing about the Olympics uh, was uh, this guy on Reddit said, uh, would, would, be, would the Olympics still be as interesting nowadays if they did like they did in ancient Greece times when they all the athletes competed naked? <laughs> More people might watch it. I don't know. Beach volleyball uh, would be more interesting, probably, right? But like, uh, one of the people said, you know, like uh, huddles. Oh. Be, <laughs> uh, the long jump, the you know, sand would get everywhere. <laughs> and I, I was like, well, that would be interesting. Like, I mean, wrestling, rugby, uh, judo. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting, I, mean, I suppose. There wouldn't be as many sports as there are. They would they would probably if they went back to the ancient Greece stuff, they would only do those games. The run or the yeah, I, wouldn't have, I did see you something that I anything. thought would be interesting. Someone said they should have at least one just regular person competing <laughs> in each event so that you can really see how <laughs> what it's like to be a regular person trying to do this stuff and yeah. how, how destroyed they get. I'm all for adding new sports, but like some of the some of the ones that they have added is just strange. Like curling? No, curling is a test of everything of I see, you know, I balance. Throwing stones, making sure they stop where they is. Curling's actually a fun sport to watch. If you haven't ever seen it, you should watch it. Uh, okay. But no, uh, like the U.S. Uh, men's like, curling team looked like a whole one. bunch of dads who just wanted to get away from their wife and kids for a weekend. <laughs> and they won. But they looked surprised when they won. They're like, man, we didn't think we'd win like, the Olympics. What about they wore bad polos? Man? They wore blue polos and khaki pants. <laughs> One one of the sports this year that got me was uh, the 
the skateboard ones. Like, I was like, really? Skateboarding as an Olympic sport? Like, I'm not saying it's not a sport, but, like, I just don't know if I am, like, sending my 17-year-old kid to Japan to go skateboarding. Hey, if they made it to the Olympics, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I don't know if I still, I don't think I would do it. Yeah. I mean, I think the one that won it was pretty young. Barely 18. Wow. Um, now, I wish I watched the skeet shooting. Because that would have been fun to watch the guy win his third goal from, for the U.S. in was skeet it, shooting. Was it U, uh, US, shooting. U.S. won gold. Yeah, his third time. Nice. Which would have been fun to watch. I, I do mean, believe the U.S. won gold in all shooting events. I was going to say gun sports. That's that's pretty much us. I mean, uh, I really I did, you I got did some, watch some French and German have, listeners, but I'm sorry, gun sports. That's pretty much the U.S. You have I, no I did watch uh, the mix archery thing where the U.S. was a heavy favorite and went down to, I think, number 15 from somewhere. I can't remember where they was at. And, and uh, it was it was it was interesting to watch. One thing not related to the Olympics, but kind of related to the Olympics. So, as I said, I've gotten into boxing over the last year and uh, there was a card last night that I did want to mention. Um, it was a ridiculous card because the main event had to change uh, because was it COVID? I think it was COVID. The original opponent got COVID. And so one of the standby opponents took the fight just a couple of days notice. And then there were two other fights that where one of the opponents did not make weight. Um, so the card was really interesting, but that main event, the standby guy was from Columbia, South Carolina he was not expected to win, but he did. He knocked the guy out in, in like the fourth round, maybe. So it was it's pretty cool. Boxing's a great sport. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Boxing's a lot of fun to watch. We should watch boxing. Boxing. I'm good with boxing. It's entertaining, but just the the you know, this guy over here is a champion of these two promotions, and he's trying to go for it's essentially like Pokemon. They've got to collect all the belts. Well, but it's not collect them all. Though. It's not promotions. That's different. It's sanctioning bodies. Sanctioning bodies. I know. Yeah, promotions. You know, so the card last night, for example, was um, Premier Boxing Champions, which is not a promotion, but it's kind of. It acts like a promotion, but it's not a promotion um, for legal reasons. Uh, so the promotions put on the cards. The promotions promote the fighters, you know, literally. But the championships and everything are done by the uh, sanctioning bodies, which is kind of why I prefer boxing to, like, UFC, because the promotion and the sanctioning body are the same thing. That's kind of – that doesn't make sense to me from a sportsman standpoint. Like, it makes much more sportsmanlike sense to have uh, an unbiased body – be in charge of the championships. Not that the sanctioning bodies have proven themselves to be unbiased over the course of the last hundred years. But um, anyway, it's, it's interesting. And one cool thing, the World Boxing Association, which is the oldest of the sanctioning bodies, uh, used to be the National Boxing Association. And it also had a, wrestle, a pro wrestling arm called the National Wrestling Association, the NWA, which was unified with the NWA we know today, the National Wrestling Alliance. So the WBA used to sanction pro wrestling. I just think that's interesting. There's some interesting stuff in boxing. That's pretty interesting. How many different like belts would you have to get to be the undisputed world champion or whatever? Though I mean, are there so many different promotions you'd have to get multiple belts or titles? No, so or it's it's four. Uh, right now, the last undisputed world champion, heavyweight champion, was Lennox Lewis. Um, he had three. He was in the three belt era. So now it's the WBA, the WBC, the IBF, and the most recent one is the WBO. Um, so Lennox Lewis just had the three. Mike Tyson had um, th 
three, I think. So the there's not been an undisputed world champion since the WBO became recognized. Um, there's also the IBO, which is like a like the biggest of the of the smaller sanctioning bodies, if that makes sense. <laughs> so it's um, I don't know. It's like the Ring of Honor, I guess, of of boxing sanctioning bodies. And James and Abrey will get that reference probably more than than Casey will. But uh, Ring of Honor is a really big independent wrestling promotion. But uh, the IBO, some of their some great boxers are their champions, like um, um, oh gosh, Anthony Joshua, who has three of the four belts, is also an IBO heavyweight champion. Uh, Triple G is an IBO champion. So a lot of big, well-known boxers are uh, IBO champions. But as far as recognized, and that's recognized by the uh, by the Ring Magazine and the International Boxing Hall of Fame, it's the uh, World Boxing Association, the World Boxing Council, the International Boxing Federation, and the World Boxing Organization. So you're saying I can't just make my own belt and be like, all right, you guys want this. You got to pay a lot of money. No, there's, now, there's now five people in town. That's exactly what you could do. But you'd have to, I'm, you know, you'd have to get recognition. I don't, I don't know how you would do that. <laughs> but basically, that's exactly what they do is they say, all right, well, we're the, the world boxing collaboration. And, <laughs> you know, we're going to start sanctioning fights. So pay up those sanctioning fees. We'd have to come up with a really cool name, though, like the, I don't know, that makes it sound like it's better than all the other boxing organizations. The Universal Boxing Federation. See, that one sounds awesome. The <laughs> Universal Boxing Federation. The Universal Undisputed. The uh, Yeah, we'll just call it the Undisputed Boxing Federation. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Can, can like, Avery be our first uh, champion or whatever? Yeah, we, <laughs> we, just, we can. We just give so him the belt. It. There's a couple of ways they do it for a first champion. They either just pick somebody to recognize or they um, sanction a fight and whoever wins, you know, whoever wins gets it. But yeah, I think Abery would be a great first heavyweight champion. It'd be awesome. No big deal, Abery. You just have to defend it against Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua. Nice. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm good. You can take them. You can do it, Abery. You can do it. Just don't wear anything ridiculous to the ring. No big, like forty-five pound monstrosity. <laughs> I, I think I'm. I'm still gonna go with. I think I'm all right. Uh, I like to not have brain damage. Yeah, you would. And this is not a knock against you, but man, I, I've watched some of these guys train. Canelo Alvarez is insane. He's not a heavyweight, but he's an insane fighters watching him train makes me think oh my gosh so you're saying you think i might have a chance i'm saying you might have a chance <laughs> now in i think it was i think it was england they had chess boxing where you would box around and then you would play chess <laughs> and then you would box around and then you would play chess and you could win chess but you could lose the boxing uh, match and lose overall. So, so you had to win boxing no matter what. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the chest got harder as uh, the brain damage came on <laughs> more. But it did. Man, I've seen, I've not watched it long, but I've seen some wild knockouts. There's a guy, he's the, he's from Japan. I can't even think of his weight class, but his name is uh, Inoue. And he is so fast. He knocked this guy out, and I thought the guy had slipped. It was so fast. I didn't even see the punch. I thought he had slipped and fell, but he was – he had knocked him out. He's so fast. It's crazy. Is as uh, is fast as Bruce Lee, you would, you would say? I think this guy would probably crush Bruce Lee into powder. Not in a street fight, man. Nobody could beat Bruce Lee. Except the Yakuza. Nobody, nobody's reenacting Rocky and Tommy Gunn. That just ain't happening. <laughs> Tommy <laughs> Gunn. Gosh, what a terrible movie Rocky Five was. <laughs> well, with that, uh, we'll go to our commercial break. So join us back here after this message. Oh man, they're gonna they're gonna have some great 
stories after the message too. So you got to stick around. Hey guys, I just got a great new job and I need to recruit three more for my team. Who's in? What's the job? Oh, it's great. My friend Jeff works at Isosceles Triangle and recruited me. I'm recruiting you three, and you guys will just need to recruit three more to your team. I buy product from Jeff at Obtuse Angles. You guys buy it from me, and then your three buy it from you and sell it to the public. The earning potential is through the roof. This sounds like a pyramid scheme. What? How's it a pyramid scheme? It's just a form of investment in which each paying participant recruits two or three further participants with returns being given to the earlier participants using money contributed by the latter ones. Acute Angles is a legitimate company. I bet if you Google pyramid scheme, that's exactly what comes up. Whatever. You'll see when I'm rich. Side angle side is definitely not a pyramid scheme. And we're back to Chinwag with the Horseman. I'm Andrew. I'm Mayberry. I'm James. I'm Casey. Thanks for sticking with us through that commercial break. We want to talk about uh, an epic occurrence in the history of the Four Horsemen. I mean, just an epic occurrence. And we're, what we're talking about is Bear Island. Now, Bear Island is an island off the coast of North Carolina in the Outer Banks where we decided one year that we were going to go camping. We planned for a five-day trip. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell this first part because I know James will tell it skewed <laughs> because this is where James made, made the classic mistake of picking campsites. So um, we, we decided that James would be the one to pick the campsite. Now, here's the thing. Uh, James is very athletic. And, and still is uh, because he's a stripper. Casey uh, has, has had varying degrees of athleticism over the years, uh, but I would, I would say pretty athletic. Um, I am zero athletic, zero, dead zero. There's no athleticism at all. Uh, a. Berry could probably win gold medals in every Olympic sport if he wanted to, and that'll just tell you all you need to know about there. So, that's some important background. You'll need that for later. So we're, we're, we decide to go on this camping trip, and, and it's decided that James will pick the campsite. So James picks, I don't know, I'm going to make this up here, site 15F, we'll say, or something. I don't know. However, do you remember exactly how it was listed, James? It was site three. We didn't know there was okay. a mile between each side. Now, hang on, no. Casey. Don't get ahead of us now. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> site three, Okay. I'll let I'll let Andrew finish telling his stuff, and then I will I will tell what actually happened. <laughs> so the day of the trip comes, we're very excited. Um, I was driving, and I remember actually this I might be putting two trips together, so I'll skip that and tell it the next time when we talk about Wilmington. But um, the day of the trip comes, we're packed up and everything, and we packed two tents. Uh, we've packed just all kinds of all kinds of stuff, except we did not pack food. The thought was that we would get camp set up and be able to drive and find food. You know, no big deal. So we put the GPS, we put it in, and this is the old like I don't know if it was a Garmin or TomTom Tom or what, but the old GPS wasn't well, on a phone, kids. This was like a brick that you had to plug into your cigarette lighter when cars had cigarette lighters to get the GPS to work. So we put the address that the campsite being a website um, gave us and we started out and we drove all day, had a great drive, ended up in somebody's driveway because <laughs> the address was wrong. So um, we were looking at the website to get the correct address and it said, oh, by the way, the last ferry leaves at four to get to the island and it was like 3 30 so we were we were pushing time we got at the place we called them we said we're on the way but we're not going to be there right at four and they were like well the ferry leaves at four so we pushed it we got there we were like well what do we take we didn't know because we we had no idea where it was 
what was where and anything like that. So we took everything. And A. Barry was such a boss. A. Barry carried so much stuff <laughs> on this <laughs> on this excursion. So we get on the ferry. We didn't know we would not have access to our car. We did not know that we would not be able to get off of that island reliably uh, anytime we wanted to, basically. We had no idea that we should have brought food to cook. So um, we get to the island. Let's see. The ferry ride was pretty cool. Avery, I remember Avery remarked on the ferry operator. And uh, that she was... She was an intern. They, they were... Uh, it was time for the sea turtles to hatch, too. That was important. They... They made it very clear to us that we were not to touch any sea turtle, anything ever, or it was like a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine or something crazy. It was a it was a hundred thousand dollar fine and up to three years in prison. Well, it may as well be seven hundred and fifty thousand. I don't have a hundred thousand dollars to <laughs> exactly to pay for a turtle. So we get on the on the island looking for campsite three. So from the ferry to where the campsites began. It was probably half a mile or more, right? What do you think? Yeah, it was. It was yeah. about like half a mile or so. So, all right. In my defense, <laughs> I'm picking the campsites. Site one's taken. Site two's taken. Thinking, all right, site three. That's what we're going to go with. On the on the website and everything, it said a half mile walk from the dock to campsite three. We didn't know this, but when we got there, the half hour or the half mile um, death march started from the dock just to get to the little like, you know, bathroom pavilion area. And then from there, it was another like three mile walk to campsite three. It was awful. It was a long walk. Avery was carrying, now keep in mind, Avery was carrying everything and I, all I know is I was like, hey, Barry, man, let me get a hit off that camel pack. <laughs> uh, I was dying. I was chafing in my fat thighs so bad. It was disgusting. I was bleeding. <laughs> and you know, when, whenever we got there, I don't remember seeing anybody else that was staying, just uh, the turtle interns and the employees and stuff. Was there even anybody else staying that? that first there was night? somebody staying in one and they was fishing. No. But I think they left the next day. So we completed the death march and got camp set up. Again, we brought two tents, but we decided to put all of our crap in one tent and the four of us would sleep in the other tent. So we got we all our one crap. big tent and a little tent. Yeah. So we got all of our crap stowed. Uh, James and Casey disappeared. What was the rationale for y'all walking up the beach? We were just going back to the pavilion to see, like, what they had, like, because we didn't bring any food. We were, we're trapped now on this barren wasteland of an island that you can't build a fire on. Like, we get there, and there's a whole big wall of, of just signage that's like, you can't do this. Don't do that. You breathe, you're fired. Like, yeah, right. all of this kind of stuff. Because it was a state park. Yeah. So you couldn't... You couldn't do anything. They don't do advertise that on the on the website. So we're we're all well, starving. We also, we also only paid like ten dollars to stay a whole week. Yeah, it was not expensive. It wasn't yeah. expensive at all. Yeah. That's that's one reason why we decided to do this little excursion. Um, but yeah, so me and Casey were just like, we're going to go back up here to the pavilion and and see what they have, see what we can find. What we did find was this nice lady dressed as a park ranger who was like, oh, you guys are here to watch the movie. And we're like, what movie? And she's like, oh, National Treasure 2. Or no, Night at the Museum 2, sorry. And we're like, do we get food? She's like, I've got popcorn and Capri Suns. And we're like, yeah, we'll sit here and watch your crappy movie. Just keep giving us popcorn and stuff. Um, she's and probably then, like, "Wow, there's somebody here to watch the movie." Finally, I've been yeah, doing she it for was surprised. Nobody's ever showed up. Yeah, she was surprised there was people there to actually watch the movie. Um, and I mean, outside of offering her like our firstborn kids uh, for anything and everything in the little concession stand, 
she would not sell us anything out of the concession stand. Um, it was like, literally like literally right there too. I yeah, offered her so much cash just to open that thing up. It, w- like, it was open. But she, she just couldn't take it across and get it. it. It was open physically, but it was not open for business, and she was having no part of it. It's a good way to get. But I also want to point out. I also want to point out that they was gone for like thirty minutes. And me and Andrew was still at the campsite going, God, leave. They haven't came back. Then they decided to start walking up there as we saw a, a side by side whiz down to the beach. Uh, that almost took us both out. And so we made it back, you know, made it to the thing. That was James and Casey eating their little popcorn, sipping on their little Capri Suns going, guys, you didn't call us? Oh, we was going to come back and get you guys. This That's is just real fun. nice. The side yeah, by side probably ran over so many turtles. That so, Avery, tell them what the uh, what was the vehicle? Tell them who that was. Tuttle in tons was driving a side by side down to check cages, um, which well, that sounded cool because it was a you know a big beach. On the other side, they was driving probably about forty five miles an hour. So there was a poor sea turtle come up on the beach, dead. Just dead on the windshield of that side by side. Now uh, they sure about hit us that night. That's for sure. <laughs> so our this whole trip, it was not a uh, thirty minute drive down the road. This was all the way across the state of North Carolina. It took like how long do you think it took us to drive there? Like over eight hours or something. Well, so our original plan, I remember it being all right. We're going to get up early. We're going to leave because we had packed everything up in Andrew's car the night before. Now, granted, we packed everything up while watching Smokey and the Bandit. So we watched a lot more Smokey and the Bandit than we did any like actual packing. So that's the reason why we had no clue where anything was when we packed the car. Thus, we grabbed everything outside of grabbing, you know, the spare tire when we got there in the mass panic because it did. It took forever for us to get there eight hours because we're we're going to get up early we're going to hit the road we'll be out by you know seven it'll be fantastic 9 30 rolls around and we finally hit the road so what was the last time we held to a plan of getting up early and going anywhere uh all four of us uh, it hadn't happened because somebody likes to watch hee haw so yeah i mean if smoking the bandits on you might as well just forget about it because that's true nothing's getting done that's such a good movie. It really a fantastic is. Fantastic movie. I still oh, want to Trans Am like that. One thing that the listeners ought to know is uh, since I was a small child, I've had hypoglycemia, which gives me low blood sugar. I had not eaten since lunch on this night, and James and Casey sure were not about to tell me, that, hey, there's food up here. So I was starting to get the low blood sugar shakes when me and Avery finally arrived there. That's why I was telling that woman, look, I've got money in my wallet. I will go into my wallet <laughs> and get you some money. Just give me some Doritos. And she was like, nope, can't do it. Need some Doritos, woman. I'm going to pass out over here. She did not care. Man. Well, this is a Bear Island. is it's part of, I guess it's part of the Outer Banks, isn't it? It's like a uh, – it's not connected to the land at all. You have no, to it's, – It's one of the little, like, chain – the little chains off there. the coast. Yeah. You have to you have to take a ferry to it, of course. Fifteen minute boat ride over to the island and back to the mainland. Yeah, it oh, took yeah. a while through this swamp out there. It looked like a Vietnam swift boat. <laughs> and the island well, we itself is a, like a. We did see a bald eagle. Did we see? Do we see a deer or something on the island we did too? See deer. There were a couple of deer on that island. Yeah. How did they live on this and, deserted island? They go to yeah, yeah. crab. We saw crab too. So maybe the deer eat the crab. Yeah, purple sea creature. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I knew that was going to come up. Oh, that's a good one. So later, well, let's just let's just go ahead and tell all Bear Island. I mean, hey, why not? Yeah. So, um, so let's hold off on the purple sea creature for a minute because <laughs> that all comes right. later. But so the next day after nearly dying of you know, starvation, we nearly died of heat stroke because there's no trees on this island. So when the sun comes up, it is immediately 957 degrees Celsius, (laughs) immediately. 
and we were in this tent baking. So we thought, well, let's let's get in the ocean. So we went and floated in the ocean for a few hours. <laughs> yeah, from like five or six in the morning. Yeah, until about lunch t- lunchtime. Well, that that was the thing. The first ferry didn't run until like ten. So it, it like you could just you know buy a ticket on the ferry, ride over to the island, have a nice little beach day, ride the ferry back. That's your day. Us idiots, we decided we're going to camp, um, but we could ride the ferry anytime we wanted to uh, when it was you know operational. I think it left every like thirty minutes. Um, but yeah, we went to sleep that first night, probably nine because it was just pitch black dark there's nothing going on so we went to sleep and then yeah as soon as the sun came up at you know five it was it was terribly hot so we'd go get in the water you know prime time to get eaten by a shark (laughs) yeah we'd float in the water until the normal yeah we'd float in the water until like normal tourists showed up and then we'd go in the town we went. I remember we went to a Burger King that first, you know, that next day because, man, I was starving. And I'm fat. <laughs> it's not good for a fat guy to go without food for that long. I was starving. And I, man. Man, I got a double Whopper. I might have got a triple Whopper that day. I don't even know. But I ate my weight in Burger King. I know that. Did, did we, we ate an ungodly of amount stuff, uh, of, of food at Burger King. We brought a bunch of our excess stuff back to the car, didn't we? Like uh, yeah. one one thing I learned from that trip was to pack a lot for everything. Yes. Man, yeah. you have to carry all that stuff. <laughs> and that shore was a lot of stuff. So it might have been that evening too. We went. I, I don't. I can't remember if that was day two or day three, but we went to dinner, and we were walking back to the campsite, and um, what Avery was alluding to earlier was this poor. I don't know what it was. Some kind of purple. Uh, it looked like a jellyfish, but it was purple, like dark purple. I don't know. And Casey, being the medical expert amongst us, you know, <laughs> uh, we we knew that he would want to save this creature's life. So we were agging him on to save this animal, Casey, get this animal to safety, back to the ocean. So Casey finds a piece of rebar. Where did that come from? No one's sure exactly. But like he a finds two foot piece of rebar. So he finds this rebar, and he's his plan is to put the rebar under the creature and sort of catapult it up into the ocean. <laughs> so he needs to do that at some kind of angle to get it into the ocean. But no, that's not what happened. Casey put this rebar under the creature, up it went straight up into the air and back down, splat on the... <laughs> so, so what I remember was there was actually water. It was going to land in water and then the tide went out. <laughs> <laughs> As it was coming to land, like the, the tide went out and then splat. That's All hilarious. I remember is Casey going, it's going to land in the water. It'll hit the water. It's going to hit the water. And then, no, there's splat, no water. Splat sound, too. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Poor creature. Probably the last of its kind. It oozed purple blood, too. Yeah, for a while. That was the... Uh, that was when I first became concerned about Casey's medical career. <laughs> uh, it's like, maybe I'm in the wrong field here. Man, that was that was a fun trip. Um, glad that... that park ranger lady had some popcorn and capri suns or we would have turned into skeletons or something i'm fairly certain she might have been a serial killer because we never saw her after that point never saw anybody else that looked like a you know park ranger yeah so abray and andrew might have saved me and you from being murdered (laughs) by some random person that's true she might have been luring people in with the movie like come watch my movie She's got you lured into a soft, false sense of security. She's going to strike. Yeah. She could have picked a better movie. Yeah, she could have. <laughs> hey, I was just glad there was food there. So the day after Casey killed that endangered animal, <laughs> whatever it was, <laughs> With that that imagine that I the fine you would have faced if one of those turtle interns had seen you committing genocide. It's like, man, that's... 
You thought the turtle fine was excessive. Wait till you see the fine for this thing. <laughs> no, they don't know what this creature is, but the fine is astronomical. <laughs> they, they wouldn't find you for stealing the rebar from the turtle enclosure thing. Oh, I bet that was what that was. Yeah. I don't remember pulling it out of the ground, but, you know, who knows? So the day after that, we were floating in the water again, you know, at 530. And we were like... In the morning. We were like, this is kind of lame, right? <laughs> we were, we decided, the four of us decided to forfeit the money that we had paid for the week and just go. Just head back home. We, we had made plans to um, stop in Chapel Hill with a, a buddy of mine that, and... Um, so we decided just to move that up by a couple of days. So we got out of the water and we called Sean and asked if that was cool and he said it was. And we're walking off of Bear Island and we haven't seen hardly a living soul this entire trip. We're walking off of Bear Island and suddenly there's people everywhere. <laughs> how, long, how long were we there? Like three days or something? We three spent days. we spent three days on Bear Island. It seemed like, you know, an episode from Lost. Because every day was just the exact same. Uh, we'd go to sleep as soon as it was dark. We'd wake up as soon as it was light, and we would just float in the water. And there was definitely some kind of dolphin, shark, something like really way close off in the distance. distance. Oh yeah, I, also, I was also wonder, pretty close. Who, I also wonder who uh, threw seashells onto our walk up to our campsite. Oh yeah, like, that was the somebody, thing about this too. You had like a little dune you had to climb up to get down into the little valley where the campsite was. And it was nothing but as as jagged seashells as you could possibly have. Broken glass, pretty much. Yeah. And yeah, like we said, there's no fire building on this island. No. Allowed. Well, you couldn't. So, so I think when we saw that it was a quarter of a mile to the campsite was they did like across the dunes that you could not walk across. Yeah, the crow the flies or something. We had, we decided that, that maybe it was half a mile as a bird would fly over it, but... Mm, but walking on the beach. For what we had to do, it was like a 12-mile death march. Yes. Yeah. But at least, you know, other than the tunnel and tons almost running us over and, you know, not being trapped on this island for... 12 hours with no food, no drink. <laughs> we had a we little water. Because we, we did have a little water because A. Barry was the only one smart enough to bring anything. I'm, brought a I'm pretty sure we brought water. a cooler, didn't we? Like a, we, uh, one of our no, many no. things we brought, I thought was a cooler. No, no, we, we went and bought a cooler and packed it full of ice and drinks and uh, sandwich stuff. We yep. decided to go with Piva and Jelly sandwiches because. The only thing that could get ruined was the jelly because the peanut butter could just sit out. Okay. Yeah. So we had we had some food at some point, right? That yeah, was that was back when we uh, bought a bunch of stuff. I also began a tradition of buying a Justice League t-shirt whenever we would go somewhere. I have two Justice League t-shirts from yeah. Hoopsman camping trips. And but then we went back to Chapel Hill. And went to another chain restaurant called Cookout. I love Cookout. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll save that for the next episode. The Chapel Hill adventure, the Chapel Hill leg of uh, of our Bear Island excursion, because we did more than just go and crash at Sean's house. We uh, we visited the Capitol. We went to a museum. Yeah, we had a bunch of shenanigans while in and around Chapel Hill. That's true. Um, so dude, Chapel Hill is pretty close to Raleigh, which is the capital of civilization as we know it. Yep. So we did spend a day there. I forgot about that. I've, I've yep. got a crazy idea for us. Let's go, go back. Go back to Bear Island. Back to Bear Island? Bear Island Part 2. Maybe for one day. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> I will pay $5 for the ferry, but yeah. I am not, not staying on that island. Now. The only, re- the only way I'm going back is if I have a hotel room. Yep. That yeah. at, you know, at two, I can get on the ferry and go back to my hotel room. Yeah. Not get stuck on the island forever. I mean, are you are you essentially suggesting we have a family, we have a horseman and family outing where we, you know, take 
our wives with us. And we, at the end of the day, when the last ferry mm -hmm. heads back, we tell them, see you in the morning and they take off. Is that, <laughs> is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, are, you, are, you saying, are you saying we leave them or they leave us? <laughs> And oh, no. we'll have a foot race back to the ferry. We'll see what happens. Oh, no. Like the uh, <laughs> the ferry leaves in five minutes and we're 15 minutes away. So good luck. Yep. The last, the last time I got into a foot race with James, my knee ended up crushed against the side of a truck. So, <laughs> no, I won't be participating in that. Oh, Looks man. like Andrew's spending the night on the island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Aberry. I'll, I'll happily go back to Bear Island as long as there's a hotel room waiting for me with easy access to some food. You know, we can go back for a day and hang out, but whew, let's go camp for a week, two weeks. Oh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't mind going back to Wilmington. Yeah, that would, wouldn't be too bad. I wouldn't mind Wilmington. You know, I've been to Wilmington twice in the last few months, so what's another time? We well, could actually go back and investigate the totally legit zoo. I would be comfortable with the four of us going in there. We could, especially, especially, especially with Aberry with us. Exactly, because when you've got Aberry, you've got the advantage. Yeah. yeah. You're probably not going to get kidnapped with Aberry around you. Well, well, I think we all have until to carry, so. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a zoo. Why do you need a gun in a zoo? It's the totally legit zoo. You should be carrying many guns. Uh, well, yeah, you're you're right about that. So endangered animals, you know, endanger your life. I mean, they could be wolves just roaming the park, James. It's you true. might have to take them out. It's true. You know, I, I didn't be. see the I didn't see the totally legit zoo at all whenever I went back down there. I don't know. Maybe was it a figment of our imagination? Is it real? It's real because my boss is from Wilmington, and uh, I mentioned it to her one time, and she told me that she's aware of it, but that nobody goes there. But it's it's definitely a real thing. Do you think it's like a Tiger King type place? Yes. You know, like a something like that. Yes. Like some dudes like that's his excuse to buy exotic animals. Is he has a quote zoo? Like Tiger King mixed with the island of Doctor Moreau. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it is a zoo in a rundown big lot. Like, nice. you know, the economic crash hit, and these people were like, eh, we're out, we're done. Sell all the, you know, candles here at the big lots. <laughs> I don't know what poor sucker is going to rent this space after us. And the guy was like, you know what needs to be there? A zoo. Uh, he's like, what do you say? I, I have to be a zoo owner to... Uh own tigers well, i can i can make that happen i know a big lots next to next to my house i can buy yeah whoever gotta, owns the totally legit zoo definitely has a suit of human skin what uh <laughs> would my uh would my friend andrew jackson here uh change your mind about these exotic animal laws <laughs> hey did you guys hear this was a north carolina story the guy who had the spitting cobra that escaped from uh and like near raleigh or whatever yeah it was, that's, that's it was all sweet. over this place. Oh, Somebody yeah, they, made a Twitter account for the Cobra. Really? Man. Yeah. Who, like, why is it okay to buy a spitting Cobra? Or who thinks it's a good idea to buy one of those? Apparently uh, that guy. It doesn't like, have to be a good idea to be okay. This is America. You can do what you want to. That's true. But if it bit somebody and killed him, that would be uh, probably his fault, I would say. Yeah. I think they, they called it, like, Two or three days after it escaped, and I don't think he's facing any charges. Did they end up taking all of his? Uh, he has like a collection of snakes. I think. I wonder if they ended up taking all of his other snakes, or if he can still keep them, or how that works. I don't know. It's interesting that they're not charging him with anything. I feel like they could get reckless endangerment. Surely. Well, I mean, in the state, there is there is a law for allowing uh, wildlife to to run at large. But that only applies to actual, like, farm animals. So sheep, goats, cattle, dogs. So not world-dangerous venomous cobras or whatever? I guess not. Not spitting cobras. No spitting cobras? Well, that seems discriminatory. You should be able to have a whole herd of cobras if you want. I agree. Maybe he milks the, the cobras. 
Maybe so. <laughs> I'm fairly certain there are labs in Florida that do that. Like milk cobras. And For yeah. antivenom, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we've reached the end of the road here for this episode of Chinwag with the Horseman. Tune in next time. We'll we'll uh, head to the magical city of Chapel Hill and, of course, Raleigh to finish out our Bear Island saga. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, we also want you guys to reach out to us by email. Casey, tell them what that email address is one more time. Sure, that's chinwagwithhorseman at gmail.com. And you can email us there anytime, questions, comments. We'd love to hear from you, but don't try to steal our identities because um, we're too smart for you. Uh, James, what about the YouTube channel? And that YouTube channel is Chinwag with the Horseman. Uh, come and check us out. We're going to have uh, hopefully some other videos and stuff up uh, pretty soon. So for Chinwag with the Horseman, I'm Andrew. I'm Mayberry. I'm James. And I'm Casey. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.